right, here we go. The uh, GoPro battery is dead, so this one's going to be a little shaky. We're going to talk about what's different between these two things. Why one of them is better. So, here we have the bearings. The actual bearings, ball bearings, as they are shaped like balls. That come stock in this front end and also what's being rebuilt of this front end um, <clears throat> and they seat in appropriately ball shaped races these are the, the bearing races where the bearings race around spinning as they do that's why they're called races so <clears throat> these curved surfaces are the load bearing surface of the bearing itself. This one sits in here like this. This one sits on top like so. And all is happy with the world. However, what's a better design is for certain applications, ball bearings are perfect and they're better because they provide uh, less rotational friction because there's less points in contact with the races. Uh, there's physically more room in between them for lubrication. So for they're very popular for bicycle wheels and light weight, low load, high speed. Well, that's the exact opposite conditions that our steering necks see. Our steering necks see heavy load and incredibly low speed turning rotation of the bearing. So, in my opinion, ball bearings are not really suited for this application. They're in there from the factory, they work from the factory, whatever. However, a very popular upgrade for many good reasons is to replace the ball bearings with what's known as tapered roller bearings. So, if you look at this bearing surface, you can see it's quite wide in comparison to this much thinner and infinitely smaller area, surface area, uh, to distribute the load of all of the forces that are the front ends of our motorcycles see. So in my opinion, ball bearings on the neck of a motorcycle, or the headset bearings, or whatever you want to call them, they go by many names, ball bearings in this application is not uh, not the best choice, in my opinion, for load versus need, you know. Um, another thing that sucks is you can only get this from Suzuki. You can probably order them from Koyo if you use this part number. But still, it's a very expensive, pretty delicate, honestly, uh, kind of bearing because the cage that holds all the balls is plastic, some sort of, you know, late 90s plastic. I don't know what it, what the actual chemical composition of it is. However, if you look at the cage that holds the tapered bearing together, it is, guess what? It's made out of metal, not just any metal, some kind of awesome steel. So if you look at how many bearings there are. First of all, there's more tapered roller bearings in this bearing than there are ball bearings in this one. And secondly, the surface, the bearing, the load bearing surface that it rides on is infinitely larger, which means, guess what? When you have more, when you have the same amount of forces distributed over a larger area, you get less pressure point, less pressure on each of the points. And guess what? 
this bearing is designed to not only rotate very fast, but rotate very, very fast under an extreme load. I'll look up the specifications for it, but the, the axial load and also the thrust loads that this bearing can withstand are probably 10 times higher than, than these ball bearings can withstand. So if you like doing wheelies and if you like doing, if you like steering your bike and knowing that when you go over crazy potholes like what we have in California, or if you even fucking jump the thing, <laughs> Um, these guys are going to survive infinitely more abuse than these guys ever could possibly with, withstand. Uh, the, uh, the downsides? Well, there's not really any. Um, one of them, I suppose, is these are more involved to pack full of grease. Um, it takes a couple minutes versus just slathering some grease on these guys. You don't have any tight areas to fit the grease into. You kind of got to force the grease up in between the rollers and the races. But anyways, um, this is a wickedly popular upgrade with racers and stunters to get rid of the ball bearings that came on these bikes from the factory and replace them with tapered roller bearings. Tapered roller bearings are used in the necks of motocross and dirt bikes and um, it's kind of shocking to see to see ball bearings in the in the steering heads of these high performance motorcycles that we ride and that we like to ride. Um, it's it, it from a machinist standpoint and a and, and kind of a guy that knows what he's looking at and what it needs to accomplish during its lifespan. Um, I I uh, I can't see myself putting my bike back together without these tapered roller bearings, and not just any tapered roller bearings. These are from a quality manufacturer, Timken, and there's other. Very good manufacturers of bearings, Koyo, uh, SKF, NTN is pretty good, and a couple other, you know, pretty pretty top of the line bearing manufacturers that have been in the game for a long, long time. Um, and on something like this, I wouldn't recommend cheaping out on, um, you know, the uh, Chinese knockoff bearings. Actually, go into a bearing shop and uh, buy, you know, one of one of their quality bearings. And you can tell it's not just a you know, run-of-the-mill bearing by the part number. And I don't know how to decode this part number entirely or what it all means. But um, if it just says three two zero zero six and then ends there, that's sort of a generic one that. Um, may not have met more wickedly stringent uh, testing procedures than when you get these these suffix numbers, the X-90KA1 um, refers to, to uh, different tolerances, which are likely to be much, much tighter, um, which means that these parts are, are the kind of the cream of the crop when everything's made. Um, there's a tolerance for for machining this kind of stuff and you know there there's a tolerance for what angle this race is cut at for what overall diameter the overall height it's all specified and what they'll do is they'll they'll go through and cherry pick the ones that are closest to tolerance and um and then package those differently and the and those get these special suffix part numbers so if your box just says 32006 and the part number ends there um you know that's not necessarily the cream of the crop uh in the bearing world because these extra numbers mean something and typically what that is is tighter tolerances or 
specified tolerances. So you know that this bearing, you know, has been quadruple checked uh, and meets its specification. So you'll never, ever, ever have to worry about it again when you get when you get these these types of part numbers. Um, so yeah, that's a little, you know, 10 minute rant, more than he probably wanted to know about bearings, uh, but this shit's important. We, you know, we ride these bikes and we should know what they're made out of. And uh, when you're doing a replacement of something, like I'm, I'm changing this old SV, naked front end for unpictured uh this gsxr inverted front end and it's extraordinarily easy now to uh, sort of fix this problem as i see it rather than you know i'm certainly not going to reuse the bearings that have been in there since the last 19 years or so um so when you replace something, start thinking about how you could upgrade it or, you know, make it better because the time you spend while it's apart will pay dividends later in you never having to take it apart again. So that's some philosophy of rebuilding shit. And you heard it here first. Peace.